Hey guys, Phil here from A1200.net. Hope you're all doing well. Um, so I will really try to make this video as short as possible. But there is a couple things that I would like to share with you. So as you guys know, the team was present at the Amiga 34 event in Neuss in Germany. It was absolutely amazing. And I would like to extend my greets here to Marcus Tillman for his organization. Marcus, thanks a lot. Um, that was great. And we actually can't wait uh, for the next event to take place. I can say that all people that had booths and tables share the same feelings uh, as myself. The event was absolutely awesome. And the venue was great. Uh, we had so many visitors uh, this time i don't know i would say maybe around a thousand people over the two days that was absolutely awesome guys so thank you so much for coming that being said let's move on to the next photo we don't want this video to take hours right so these were our tables at amiga 34 our booth on my left side you can see paul h and behind me on my right side you will see later on the next photo uh, paul k our 3d specialist paul h uh, being our developer in front of me, we have two gentlemen where I was actually explaining uh, the latest keycap samples um, that we had, and we presented these uh, keycap samples at Noise, so that actually backers visiting our booth could see the progress we were making um, on, on these. Oh, by the way, uh, this gentleman in the dark uh, jacket in front of me, uh, if you could please contact me and send me an email, um, or send an email to contact at a1200.net, because, oh uh, yeah, um, there is a couple of things that I need to send you. Yeah, I totally forgot about this um, when we were chatting together. We, so many topics to, to talk about, right? So on to the next photo now. So as I said before, on my right side, you can see Paul K. So Paul um, Kitching is taking care of all our 3D designs and all artwork that we use for our presentation, website, etc., etc. So let's go back to the topic of this campaign update. So let's shift over to this model here. Um, so as I said before, we are still waiting for our Cinecine prototype. It's currently underway. Uh, I think that uh, we'll have this uh, within the next 15 days. Um, yes, it's taking a bit of time, but uh, that's perfectly normal, in fact. They, the factory uh, gently actually sent me uh, the models um, that they are using to create the CNC prototype. And as you can see here, uh, we now have uh, the uh, Amiga logo on top of the case. So I've made a, a small um, quick view uh, on the case components in here. But just before that, uh, and just before we go uh, uh, more into details uh, about, about those, I would like to uh, share with you this photo here. So, oops, um, it's not really well centered. And uh, here we go. Uh, so this is how it looks when a CNC prototype is manufacturing. First, uh, you have a um, large block of polymer that is used and carved out by the CNC machine right here. It is then uh, finalized by hand. And the reason of the CNC prototyping uh, comes from the fact that before going into creating the molds, we have to check that all devices, motherboards and all parts, are currently perfectly fitting into the case before going to the uh, molds tooling. And this is why CNC tooling is a very important step. So it is finalized by hand. You can see the back in here. When this process is done, you certainly remember, because this is the CNC prototype of the Amiga 1200 case we had back in the days, and some of you certainly uh, remember uh, these photos. So that is the CNC prototype for the Amiga 1200 case, and we will go through the exact same steps for the Amiga 500 case. I just wanted to make sure that uh, you, you got it about the CNC prototyping. So let's go back to our 3D model. Uh, this model is the one used for the CNC prototyping tool. Yes, um, you can see the Amiga logo here, as I said before. And so I just expanded the, the trapdoors, left and right trapdoors for you guys to, to follow. The left trapdoor here, it's uh, the typical trapdoor, right? Nothing special about it. Um, it's the same as on the original case, so uh, you, you know it well, right? Um, here you can see the bottom trapdoor. We added a couple vents, um, so this should be uh, perfect as well. Uh, nothing really fancy here. And uh, yes, as you can certainly see here, you can see our new right side trapdoor. Just uh, for the purpose of this uh, quick review, let's hide the top shell. And um, you can see that the um, 
left side, right side, sorry, right sub trap door fits perfectly. Once you get your Amiga 500 case, it comes with two right sub trap door. This one is the plain model, so in case of you do not own any vampire standalone board or any Raspberry Pi um, or any any card with any expansion at all, you can simply actually just close um, the, the the case exactly the same way as it is closed when uh, you keep the left side trap door in place. So just let me move this a bit here. Yep, it's not super. Yeah, like that. Okay, so that's the, the same, the same on the on the right side trapdoor. In the event of you are using, say, a, a vampire uh, standalone board, then you will have the choice to actually swap out this right side trapdoor here and place uh, this one instead. And this one comes with an HDMI out here. Um, so you will have to use an HDMI right angled HDMI output cable here. So the cable will come alongside the right side of the case. We have the two USB expansion ports and you have the, the micro SD expansion port here. So these ports are to be used um, with the ports here you can see on the uh, Vampire V4 uh, standalone. So RG45, HDMI out, USB, etc. Uh, of course, it also works with the Let's Hide the Vampire, it also works with the Raspberry Pi, and um, yeah, just use the ports and you will, technically, you will just use expansion cables here. And then those expansion cables will actually fit perfectly in this location. Uh, on the back of the case, um, you have the extension slot for the RG45. So you might think that uh, this one is a bit funny here, uh, that it is because we will use a very particular um, RG45 expansion wire. And um, again, we will uh, share with you the exact reference and the model that we will have uh, to use for this bracket here. Um, and of course, if again, you do not use these expansion trapdoors, etc. and ports, uh, you can just keep everything normal. You can just replace the trap doors here and then you have your original case as uh, usual. Uh, oh, hold on a second, and there is one more thing here. Uh, about the Raspberry Pi and Vampire V4 standalone boards, you also have screw mounts, right? Uh, so you can actually, let me hide the Raspberry Pi here. You have those mounts here and, and you have metal threads. So no need to be worried about, you know, um, damaging the plastic or whatever. You have uh, metal mounts here to actually um, uh, mount the Raspberry Pi or the, the Vampire V4. Vampire V4 and the Raspberry Pi, those two cards are sharing um, their, their mount ports, right? So these four here are to be used for the Raspberry Pi card. And then these three here are to be used for the Vampire standalone board. Do not use this port. It is not aligned because uh, it is aligned for the Raspberry Pi. Here we go. So let's move out quickly. And um, so as you can see here, this is the, the previous render uh, about our current um, a new mechanical keyboard replacement for the Amiga 500 and Amiga 1200 computers as well as Amiga 2000, 3000 and 4000. And to illustrate this keyboard, uh, let me show you a couple more photos here about um, noise. Uh, oops, again, I'm not centered. It's okay. It should do. So here we go. Uh, let's get this a bit slightly bigger. All right. Sorry guys, here we go. So this is the prototype uh, we were running at Amiga 34. So all visitors were actually able to, to type uh, on this uh, prototype and to see how it worked. And uh, it did work great. I just would like to point out guys, so this is still a prototype and the keys are very high on this prototype because we do use our own switches here. However, we didn't have uh, enough time to be ready for Amiga 34 so we had to use Cherry MX stems on these 
keycaps. Uh, we are currently waiting for our Mitsumi hybrid uh, stems. This keyboard will be 100% compatible with the original Commodore and Amiga Technologies keycaps and also with our keycaps. So there is no need to be worried about that. Our 100% mechanical keyboard is compatible with all Mitsumi hybrid keys. This uh, prototype here was linked to an Amiga 500 uh, computer. And what you have to uh, understand here is that the top right part of this new keyboard um, will be um, removable. The keyboard will not have that, that part here. You will have a connector and it will be uh, removable. So either if you want to use the new keyboard on the Amiga 500, you will have a Amiga 500 adapter that will plug in this space here. When you want to move the keyboard from your Amiga 500 computer into an Amiga 1200 computer, you will simply remove that part and plug in the Amiga 1200 uh, module. So again, when you get a new keyboard, you will get just the keyboard and the switches, no keycaps, and two modules. One module for the Amiga 500 computer and another module for the Amiga 1200 computer. Here on this photo, uh, you can see the, the, the height uh, where these keycaps were actually floating <laughs> over on the, on the keyboard. So keep in mind that um, this is just a prototype again, right? And the keys will be positioned correctly. Um, the reason why they are so high, again, is because we had to use Cherry Amix stems and to plug regular Mitsumi hybrid keycaps on these switches, we use an adapter. This adapter made those keys to rise a bit higher. So that's the reason why you can see it like that. Uh, aside from that, the keyboard was working perfectly. We do have our own firmware on this keyboard and the keyboard support ghosting, um, Amiga shortcut, uh, resets, everything. And uh, here was the, the keyboard uh, in, in play and uh, someone wanted to, yeah, that's funny here. Anyway, uh, Marcel in our team will make a video review of this um, prototype keyboard very soon and it will be published, uh, of course, so you'll be able to, uh, to follow uh, on this. As you saw just before on the photos, um, this new keyboard has a metal shield. So here it is, the, the keyboard is very sturdy, it's very heavy, it's not a toy at all. Um, we were actually joking with visitors at Amiga 34 uh, saying that you could actually use this keyboard as a weapon, <laughs> as heavy as it is and with this metal port, it's definitely not a toy, it's really rigid, really solid and we are very proud uh, of the current status of this prototype. That's it about this uh, campaign update, so thank you so much for your patience guys, I uh, really appreciate it. We will provide you uh, another update in a couple weeks, I guess, as soon as we get the CNC prototype. Thank you guys and see you soon. Bye bye.